As the dawn of smart home technology is upon us, there are many of us who don't have triple figure sums of money in our pockets, just burning a hole or waiting to be spent on a system like Philips Hue, or indeed any of the more expensive smart technologies on the market. I'm in that position myself, and thus wanted to find a way of controlling my lighting in my room without spending several hundred pounds on a system. I did this by means of having a look on Amazon and finding a connected dimmer switch, and that's what this video is about. To give you a little bit of a background about my lighting system previous to this, I had a simple dimmer switch that I bought from b and I think it was, uh, mounted to my wall, and that is all I used to control my lights. I wanted to find a dimmer switch that was connected in particular because I like to have the functionality of being able to dim my lights by hand, turn them on and off by hand, but also have the ability to control them through the Google Assistant, on my phone or my watch, or indeed my Google Home. As I mentioned previously, this very quickly led me to Amazon, and just by doing a couple of searches I came across an offering that looked enticing. So the switch that I bought is a sort of no-name option. It uses an open API, I believe, that is called Smart Life. Uh, it's basically as simple as downloading an app onto your phone and you go from there. The switch itself uh, is not a complicated item at all. It requires a neutral connection, uh, which is not uncommon for a light switch like this. Um, and allows you to connect up to three bulbs simultaneously. The nice thing is that these bulbs don't need to be smart in and of themselves, they just need to be LED and not draw too much power, as is very often the case with these switches too. As far as actually using the switch is concerned, it has a very simple interface, just three buttons, well I say buttons, they're sort of touch areas on the front of the switch, uh, which are used to turn on and off the lights and indeed dim them. Getting the switch connected to my electrical circuit again was very, very simple. I'm by no means anyone with particularly sound electrical knowledge or anything, but I can understand a basic diagram. Like I said before, uh, the switch requires a neutral wire, which I knew I had, um, and obviously a positive connection too. I just turned off my electricity at the switch box and went from there. Once the switch was connected and my power was restored, the lights on the front of the switch began to flash, which according to the instructions at least, indicated that the switch was ready to pair. So I went and downloaded the Smart Life app from the Play Store and it guided me through. In terms of actually getting the device connected, it's very similar to a Chromecast in that it can broadcast its own sort of miniature Wi-Fi network. Your phone simply connects to that and then you use that in order to transmit the information, such as your Wi-Fi password, to the switch. It's a really simple system and it works pretty flawlessly in my experience. From there, I wanted to basically ignore the Smart Life app. It's very obviously designed by a team of developers that aren't particularly experienced, and my primary purpose for this switch anyway was to use it with the Google Assistant, which is my preferred way of controlling that sort of thing anyway. So you can set up the switch really easily just with a name, and following that you simply go into your Google Home app and you configure it as a smart home device under that name. It works really well, there's no sort of downloading IFTTT if you'd rather not, obviously you can, but uh, I wanted the most simple solution for this, and again, it works very, very well. Up until this point, everything I've said about the Switch has been remarkably positive, but as with almost any smaller tech company, there are always going to be some downsides. If there are some things that I dislike about the Switch, then there's probably two that stand out above anything else. One of which being that the touchscreen interface, if you want to call it that, those buttons on the front of the device, they're not exactly quick to respond. From the time that you tap the on button on the Switch to the time that the Switch actually activates the lights, you're probably waiting the best part of a second to two seconds, which in my experience is a little bit long. I've taken to standing on the landing or whilst I'm walking towards my room I'll talk to my Google Home which will turn on the lights. The other thing that I wish the switch would do would be to actually let me turn off the LED backlights to those buttons on the front. It's not a big deal, and it, I'm sort of used to it at this point, but when I'm going to sleep and my room is completely dark, the backlight is surprisingly bright. It would be quite nice just to be able to turn it off. To be completely honest, I'm wondering whether to open up the switch and see whether I can manually disable the LED. Um, that might be a video that I create in the future if I choose to do so. 
As far as controlling the Switch is concerned, you've got a number of options. So the Switch is both Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant enabled. So you can obviously use either one of those voice assistants in order to control it. There's no HomeKit support, but for the three people that use Apple's HomeKit, I think they may possibly have rather deeper pockets than me and might be able to afford a nicer Switch. So that's no concern to me. The other options are to obviously either use the Switch uh, which works just fine, or you can choose to use the app, which again is not a bad way to go. The app isn't, as I said, particularly polished, which might be a concern to some people, but if it's a case of you not wanting to talk to a device or something like that, but you're not near the switch, you can obviously still use the app in order to turn the lights on and off and dim them. Another feature that's possibly worth noting is that the Switch supports scheduling through the app. So, say you're going away on holiday, but you don't want anyone to know that you're out of the house for a more extended period of time, you can set it up so that the lights turn on and off at random intervals in order to make people think that you're still at home even though you're not. It's not something I can see myself personally using, I'm generally at home anyway, or a member of my family is, but maybe it's something I'll delve into in the future. That all having been said, I'm really happy with this switch. I think it fits my use case pretty well. I wanted to keep my sort of vintagey looking bulbs going for a little bit, and I didn't really want to spend a lot of money. So for the 16 or 17 pounds that I spent on it, I really can't fault it. I think the app could do with some work, and it would be nice to be able to turn that touch interface off uh, on occasion. But furthering that, I don't think there are any major issues here. Um, all that's left for me to say really is, if you fancy subscribing, then by all means do. I can't say I'm a particularly regular producer of content, but it's something I like doing when I get some spare time. Obviously, a thumbs up is always appreciated. I don't make any money from these videos because that is the way that YouTube works. But by all means, subscribe, like, and it would always be nice if you followed me on Instagram. Thank you for watching. Bye.